afternoon. Welcome. We are back in studio. Glad to be back here. We're going to talk some sports with Val, and Val joins me and have seen us for a while. And how you been doing, Val? Hanging in there. I, I, I've, I've uh, started to go around. I've been talking to some volleyball coaches lately. I haven't talked with a ton of football coaches yet, but I'm working my way around to it, and we'll have a lot more information by next Friday as we get ready for season openers. Yeah, we got scrimmages coming up later on tonight, and uh, we've got a, a, a big, uh, you know, historic event, uh, the 35th anniversary of a, a game that was kind of important in Rochester's history. Uh, they're going to be celebrating uh, those uh, kids and from that 87 2A state championship team uh, on September 2nd's homecoming. So our classic RTC classic uh, game of the week this week is going to be none other than the 1987 Rochester uh, 2A state championship game. So we'll have that coming up after the conclusion of talking sports tonight on Channel Four. So hope you enjoy that. And boy, it's hard to believe 35 years. It's uh, rolled right by. I mean, I was in junior high when they won state. You know, it seems like uh, not that long ago. So. Um, but uh, yeah. I wasn't here back in 1987, but I've gotten to meet a lot of the guys on the team, and what that still means to them today oh, yeah. means a lot. And that just not that game, but that whole run, the the Western Boone game in which they scored late to win the game here, and the which I think was the regional, and then winning that very, 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 very cold game at North Newton in the semi-state. Yeah, yeah. Heard a lot about that one. That's mm -hmm. uh, probably one of the coldest games uh, played in a long time, yeah. high school wise. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a, a nice celebration coming up on homecoming night on September 2nd. Um, before we get going here too deep into it, uh, just wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about what we've been doing. Obviously, we had our graduation ceremonies back in the uh, late spring, and then we did a lot of. Uh, uh, fair coverage over the summer, so we uh, were over at Plasky County Fair, and we were at, uh, of course, here at Fulton County Fair. And want to thank uh, Val and Dakota and uh, our two interns. We had uh, Caleb Wilson from right here in Rochester and Gavin uh, Dewitt from up in Argus, helping us out this summer, and and they're going to be helping us out this fall as well. And uh, really appreciate their help uh, this summer. They did some uh, long days. When it, uh, it came down to uh, fair coverage, did a few uh, uh, town and country baseball games over at the uh, you know little league field. Got uh, some good coverage of that. Uh, the 10U and, and 12U teams both advanced from the uh, first round and, and made it into the semi states. So congratulations to the boys there and. Um, we're working too. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff coming up, obviously for the fall and. If you have any interest in advertising with us, I uh, just wanted to give a quick plug for that. We have some really good packages, and you know that advertising money doesn't go to us. Val or I doesn't go to uh, RTC. We use that to uh, to support the stuff that we do with the interns. We pay the interns. We uh, pay our SVT kids, which are school video team members, the uh, kids that work for us at the various schools, and. Uh, we use those dollars to uh, help with those programs and give that back to the community. And uh, also, you get a, a pretty good uh, bang for your buck. We give you free ad production, and we also, uh, you know, we put the ads not only on our live events, but we also put them on Channel Four and Channel Forty One uh, run throughout the day. And you know, it comes out to three, four hundred, uh, sometimes five hundred, depending on the uh, rotations. Uh, plays per month uh, on Channel 4 and 41. So when you start uh, figuring out the dollars per ad run, uh, it's really a, a very, very good uh, bang for your buck, if you will. So if you have any uh, desire to do any advertising with us, uh, my information, Val's information is down there. Feel free to uh, call or email, and we'll uh, get you more information on that. So... Um, Val, you mentioned uh, the the football season upcoming. You have a, a little bit of an announcement, I guess you could say, about uh, what you're going to be doing this football season. Yeah, I will be Randy Wynn's broadcast partner the, on Friday nights this fall for the Rochester Zebras. And those games will be simulcast on WROI Radio and right here on RTC TV4. 
So Val will be uh, even more uh, duties going on on a Friday night, and uh, you've you've kind of expanded your uh, plate, if you will, over the last couple of years. On on you know you started off as a writer, and I, I kind of feel like. Uh, I don't know, maybe one of those people that discovered a, a hidden gem, right? Because uh, I think you knew what you could do, but a lot of people really didn't understand what you could do. And, and your broadcast uh, career has been uh, as much a, a part of uh, what you've been doing the last few years as, as writing. Yeah, yeah. Even I've been kind of surprised by that, and it's been a lot of fun. And, you know, I've always had my thoughts about these games. It's just, I guess I'm going to have to blurt them out <laughs> in the moment. Uh, while these games are going on, but I've t- I missed one Rochester football game since 2004. I've seen a lot of zebra football games, so let's see if I've learned anything, and hopefully I can pass along a little bit, not a little bit of knowledge on the air. Yeah, really looking forward to that. Having you on not only the radio, but uh, of course here on RTC4 and, and IHSA TV, and uh, and going along with that is we're going to talk a little bit about our teams coming up here uh, t- in today's show, but also you're going to be talking uh, more. Um, football preview coming up on Sunday uh, at 2 o'clock. It's going to be a radio only, but you're going to be over at the Moose with uh, Randy, and I think you got about, what, six or seven coaches lined up? I think, yeah, I think six uh, with uh, Coach Schaefer from Rochester is going to be there, Coach uh, Stephen Moriarty from Valley is there, coaches from Caston and Culver and North Miami and Winnemac are also going to be there, so I'm looking forward to taking part in that and uh, hope getting a Getting a chance to talk to some coaches, that's why I say I'll have a little bit more information when we talk sure. next week. But I, I think I have a fairly good kind of handle on where things are, at, the, at least at this point, at least going into the season. Yeah, really, uh, you know, as we get going, so next week, uh, obviously, things are really going to take off. You know, the golf teams have all been out on the course and, and had some action here in the last couple of weeks. They always get started, you know, first right out of the gate. But, uh, you know, we've got volleyball coming up next week. Uh, we've got a huge early season matchup with the Rochester Zebras uh, hosting the Pioneer Panthers on Tuesday night. We're going to have that one live for you on RTC4. Uh, you know, that can have a lot of implications down the road as uh, Pioneer has now moved up to 2A and they will be coming to Rochester for sectional play later in the year when they uh, complete the regular season. So that's going to be a big one to see, uh, you know, hey, where are we at? Yeah, I think that's the first of what Pioneer hopes are many trips to Rochester this year. And, yeah, very good early season sign for Rochester to see kind of where they're at, having graduated four key seniors from last year's team. And, of course, where's Pioneer at? Because they graduated Haley Kripe, who was our RTC Player of the Year last year, Yeah, among others. Yeah, so it's going to be, you know, and and Pioneer coming off of the first ever sectional loss for Coach Rod Nyes, and you think about that. I mean, he's been there, I think, 16 years now, mm-hmm. and he's lost one sectional game. Uh, so they're going to be hungry as well. And, you know, that's the thing with, with Pioneer. They don't, uh, you know, they don't rebuild. They reload. Mm-hmm. Uh, they should have a, a really good squad coming in. And for the, uh, the Zebras, uh, you know, they lost a, a couple of pretty big players up front in uh, Emily Hughes and uh, Lexi Thomas. So... And a great Literally li- big shoes to fill. Right, and they also lost a great libero in Kylie Houston. Sure. And, 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 you know, Kenzie Bradley, who was, you know, a reliable defensive player. Uh, but, it, it, uh, yeah, I, I've got, I got to see Rochester practice last week. Obviously, they, I was not able to go to their scrimmage last night against Northwestern. We'll talk about maybe them a little bit later. But uh, I think it's, you know, the Lee Zebras have always been very competitive. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. no reason to think why that shouldn't still happen. And they're, you know... You talk about a team that plays like their coach. I mean, they're they're fiery. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, their coach is very uh, you know fiery as well. And uh, you know, so I don't think they're ever gonna just uh, roll over and lay down. They're gonna mm-hmm. they're gonna come back and, and they're gonna fight. And it's it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, especially you know this early season matchup versus where they are when it comes to playoff time because mm-hmm. they are gonna have a lot of pieces. And they, they may, it uh, sounds like, may change up their setter situation a little bit, maybe go to a two-setter system so, um, you know, they can get uh, uh, Alexis Kuskasekis some, some more touches, uh, you know, off the set. Uh, also coming up next week, we're going to keep it all kinds of mixed up. We're going to have uh, some soccer for you as the uh, Rochester Zebras will be hosting the cast and Comets on Thursday night, so we'll have that from Blackett or Field for you. We did that game last year. 
Uh, it's going to be uh, a little bit different look for uh, the Zebras. We've got a, another new coach uh, again this year, so uh, we'll see how that goes. And you know, they they've lost a couple of really good players over the last two years, with uh, Schaefer graduating two years ago, and then uh, with uh, um, well, Zach Pickens was Pickens probably the greatest player in Rochester year. school history. Right. So. They're going to have some big shoes to fill, too. And then the cast and comments obviously coming in off of uh, their first ever uh, soccer sectional. But they've had some graduation losses as well. So mm -hmm. it would be interesting to see where those two teams are. Uh, and then when we get down to Friday, uh, the Rochester Zebras, uh, you know, boy, you start out right out, uh, right out of the gate with a huge TRC matchup, Southwood coming to town. You know, Southwood and Rochester both – wanting to uh, put their stamp on the conference this year, you know, so it's going to be a huge, huge early season matchup. Rochester's not beaten Southwood since 2014. They would like to do something about that this year. Uh, and then the other game we'll have, so uh, live game we'll have on uh, Friday is going to be Tiffany Valley hosting Wawa C. So uh, a little bit of non-conference, you know, Valley coming off of an undefeated regular season last year, uh, unfortunately lost in the sectional to Mishawaka Marion. But, uh, you know, they look to be really strong again this year as well. They did graduate a lot of uh, really good players, but uh, Coach Moe looks to have, uh, you know, try to have as good a season this year as he had last year. I mean, a lot of good pieces back as well. For yeah, Valley. a lot of good pieces. Yeah, exactly. I there, there, there are a lot of terrific athletes on this team, and and many, many of them are just juniors. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this isn't going away anytime soon. Yeah, it all starts with Wade Jones. I mean, yeah. what a tremendous career he's had already, and uh, he's like you said, just a junior coming in this year. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff coming up. So. Uh, let's take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into our, uh, our football teams and, and our volleyball teams in our uh, first segment when we get back. We're going to take a quick break and be back here in just a moment watching Talking Sports with Val. Advertise your business or service with RTC TV4. Advertisements on RTC TV4 will run during our local programming on Channel 4 and Channel 41. Your ad will be produced locally through our commercial production services for no extra cost. With an ad purchase, you will also get a banner ad on our sports blog written by our locally renowned journalist, Val T. Get more eyes on your business or service with RTC TV4. Call today at 574-527-4408 or please visit our website at www.rtc4.com. All right, welcome back here. We're talking sports with Val for uh, Friday afternoon, our last Friday for uh, a while with, uh, with no live uh, football games going on later on tonight. Teams are going to be doing their scrimmages tonight, so let's talk a little bit more in depth about our teams. Rochester uh, is going to be hosting the Winnemac Warriors tonight in a uh, scrimmage. Uh, you know, coming off of a, a really good season last year in uh, Coach Schaefer's first year and yeah, they graduated some some uh, some pretty good players, but boy, they've got a really good core coming back and and look to have a really good season. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to um, Coach Ron Schaefer after their open practice. Well, it kind of was going to be an open practice, and then because of the circumstance that what happened at Rochester last Friday, it became kind of a just a regular regular old closed practice. But I was able to talk to Coach Schaefer, and uh, I think you know, one of the challenges that he and, you know, Nate Basham and Isaac Schaefer are having to deal with and the coaching staff are having to deal with is, okay, we've gotten from point A to point B. Now do we start at point B and to get to point C? Because we don't want to get back to point A. Mm -hmm. We've already done that. Right. So let's, let's, take, let's take it a step further. Uh, they've done the Manchester University camp already, which is they do that. It's usually about the third week in June. Mm -hmm. And they did that for the second year in a row. I think they took 44 kids with them to Manchester for an, an overnight camp. That is a great number. Yeah, that's a great number. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of key pieces back when you talk about Aaron Swango at quarterback and Alex Deming. He was our RTC player of the year last year, and what a remarkable year. He had over 1,600 yards rushing. Um, so you, And then, you know, four reliable wing backs to, to join him. So you can't, if you put all your focus on stopping Deming, well, then the wing backs can get to you. And and those guys had great years last year. Guys like Peyton Lunau and Gavin McKee. Uh, so 
so you can't, so th- there's there's some more balance to this offense. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a young sophomore split end that they're really high on, and Owen Prater. But I think you know the key determining point on offense is going to be that offensive line, because whenever it was third and one or fourth and one last year, they just dialed up, played to run behind number fifty-seven. Right. They were going to run behind Marshall Fishback and and take their chances, especially with Deming. Mm-hmm. Now who's going to be that guy? We know Brady Beck will be back at one guard position. We know that Austin Rogers will be back at center. That that's a great start. We know that Hunter Schreiber will be back in one of the tackles. His older brother Jesse graduated, so who will be that other tackle? It looks like Xavier Vance is a guy who's going to get get a long look at that spot. Yeah, yeah. And then who's going to be that other guard? Could it be a guy like maybe Eli Swango, or could it be somebody else? But those guards are so important in that wing T offense. That ability to pull and move your feet. Uh, so who will they? Who will they go behind when they need that yard? I mean, you know, you would think Brady Beck because he's the most experienced guy, mm-hmm. but it could be somebody else. But th- that if that offensive line can gel and can and can, you know, be physical right from the start of the year, that's going to be so important because that's going to create other opportunities for not just Deming. And one one of the things that you told me, Coach Schaefer, was hoping that. Uh, he can have more of those linemen just play in one way, which would obviously be a huge benefit if he can do that. Right, that would be ideal, yeah. Coach Shaver's not only the head coach and the, off, and the offensive play caller, but he also coaches the offensive and defensive lines. And, yeah, that he, he has said that he wants guys going one way ideally. Right. Now, people say, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 there's a feeling there's more depth there mm-hmm. this year. And so there, there won't have to be as many guys to go two ways, and that's especially important when you get August football coming up because it's always warm. These first two, three games of the year, it's always right. really warm. Right. Big guys get really—I mean, everybody gets tired, but the big guys get especially tired. And if you can wear a team down in the fourth quarter, that's a good way to win a game. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how they do that. Yeah, if they can do that, and then they're fresh in the fourth quarter, especially like you said in these hot, hot days, and. Right, with, you know, with Southwood and Knox right off the bat. Yeah, and, and you talk about it. Southwood, you know, their their numbers have been a little bit down. They were a little bit low last mm-hmm. year, so uh, that would be an opportunity. They've obviously got to stop Mo Lloyd. Uh, you know, easier said than done. Yeah, he's but, a, uh, yeah Mo's a one-man gang. Yeah. Uh, he, had, he had a monstrous game last year against Rochester. Yeah, but, uh, you know, you talk about that camp when they went to Manchester bringing 44 kids in the middle of summer. That mm-hmm. That is really... Uh, a great thing to see because that shows you what that depth is and uh, to get that many kids involved in the summer anymore is is pretty impressive yeah uh, and there's also uh, the, the incoming freshman class had a great eighth grade year last year mm-hmm. and there's some kids who might even play a role on this year's varsity mm-hmm. I'm talking about kids like uh, Beck and Pollock mm-hmm. I mean these these kids are freshmen but they played a lot of football and they've they're good athletes yeah Brant yeah. Beck yeah, Brady's brother. Brand yeah. back, Brady's younger brother. Mm-hmm. So uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, if these freshmen can maybe uh, in, you know push some of the veterans a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that could be a good thing. So I know uh, Brant Beck has impressed at the safety spot. And remember, Rochester needs a safety. Antonio Schlosser graduated last year. He was key to that defense. He was almost yeah. like the quarterback oh, yeah. on defense. Yeah. And he will be big. Uh you know, uh, Coach Schaefer said that he's looking at Alex De- moving Alex Deming on defense, moving him from linebacker to defensive end, to maybe be more of an impact. Get his hand, put his hand on the ground, mm-hmm. and fire up. Alex is a state qualifier in wrestling, as you all know, <laughs> and maybe playing defensive end, he can use maybe some some of those wrestling skills to get low yeah. on the opposing offensive lineman and cause some havoc. He, Coach Schaefer really seemed to be uh, excited about that uh, possibility. Yeah, so he plays down end. There's the ends are down. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if you if you haven't seen Alex Deming with his pads off, I mean, oh, that kid is ripped. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't want to go up against him on the other side. I mean, he's just strong as an ox, and you know, I, I think anywhere you put him on the football field, he's going to do well. But uh, I can just imagine what he does to that, uh, you know, either a tight end or, or tackle on the other side. Yeah. So that's going to be that's going to be interesting to see. How that move goes, because the other thing is, you know, uh, you take him out of the middle of that defense, and you know, who are they going to put in there in, in that place? Right. So. Uh, well, Eli Swango, I think, is going to get a long look. Yeah. At that spot, I, I think there's a. 
I think the inside linebacker play is going to be big for this team. I think there's a lot of confidence in the outside linebacker spots because you you got a, some of the really athletic kids out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Lou now, uh, uh, F- uh, Faverda, mm-hmm. uh, those guys. So I think there's a lot of confidence at the, the at the outside linebacker spot. And you know, the secondary came a long way last year. I think they're, they're hoping that the secondary mm-hmm. will be good. Again, that safety spot is what, is what they're trying to figure out. But um, yeah, I think inside linebacker, we're gonna it'll be key. Mm-hmm. Can they, can they can there be some leadership there? Can they plug up the plug up the run yeah. of of the opponent? But the defense made a lot of made a lot of strides last year. Of course, Coach Schaefer said they might have had the fact to do we had to face Mo Lloyd in the first week of the season. Right, your defense is not going to look great, but right off the bat. But I thought I thought the defense got a lot better as the season went on last year. Yeah. Be a big I mean, early season test. Right. Even the Laville game in the sectional, which they lost, mm-hmm. I don't think the defense played that bad. One of the right. touchdowns was on a kickoff return, and right. uh, they just gave Laville great field position most of the night. Right. Yeah, and they were they were uh, for as good of field position as they gave them all night. The defense really held strong. Yeah. I mean, they they did a commendable job. If they could have maybe not gave them such good field position all night long, it might have been different. But. Um, so you, as you talk about TRC, obviously Rochester uh, going up against Southwood early. The other team that we cover, obviously, is Tiffany Valley coming off of that perfect season last year. Um, you know, they didn't face Rochester last year. Obviously, we all know that game got canceled. The Bell game was canceled uh, like to, the night before. So, uh, you know, that didn't happen. But... Uh, you know, Valley, um, you know, they want to put their stamp on the TRC again this year, but, you know, they do have some holes to fill coming into this season. All right, I was going to say, if I told you all the, the list of all the Valley players who graduated, it could get really depressing. Yeah. I mean, if, if you know, we were talking about, you know, Rex Kirkenstein and Jameson Virgil and Ranson McBriar and Braden Shepard and Hunter Aaronman and Joel Cisneros and Braxton Davis and Wade Melanson and Grady McGriff and DJ Estep. Well, that's... And... and those are all names the, oh, that were boy. big, big players for them. But, I mean, it's that junior class when you talk about Wade Jones and Dalton Albert and, you know, Bailey. I mean, this is a – they're kind of young. Uh, other than Albert and Jones, they're, they're a little – they're going to be on the young side. But, uh, we you know, we were there for picture day the other day. Uh, size-wise, that's not going to be an issue. Hmm. Uh, numbers are out in the mid-50s, which is a little low for Valley. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, a lot of schools would love to have – 55 or 53. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see. You know, we'll, we'll see how they hold up depth wise. Um, again, this, the early season schedule is is going to be interesting. They play Wawasee at home right off the bat, and they got Northfield right after that. So it's not an easy that not an easy start those first two August games. Um, they're going to have to figure out who's going to take over at quarterback because mm-hmm. Branson McBriar was just great. I mean, Br- Branson would throw. I mean, obviously, it's not like Rochester where they never, ever basically pass, I mean, or once or twice a game. Valley passed about 10 times a game, but, boy, every every time they went downfield, Branson was so accurate. Mm-hmm. And now it's can they get, you know, who's going to be that downfield threat and who's going to be the one throwing the ball. Well, and you had Rex Kirkenstein who just turned into a, a really good threat as far as receiving goes as well. Yeah. And obviously he was very tall. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's going to be another thing there. And you, you right. talk about size. It just seems like Valley has never had issues with size. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they grow kids big over there. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you got you to gotta fill a hole in the, right. the and, line. And, and that's what, what, what the Coach Moriarty has done is – you know that commitment to the weight room is just so much better than what it was when before he got there. Yeah. How do you how do you feel that um, that gap left on the inside with uh, Wade graduating? I think I, I think they've got again it might be a situation where it's like kind of like a ratchet where maybe they don't have some studs but they've got a number of mm-hmm. they've got some options. Yeah. So so uh, yeah I'm looking forward to talking with Coach Moriarty a little bit more about that. I'll, I think I'll have a better answer for you next week. Mm-hmm. Just mentioned. Um, the two Parkers, Carl and I think Carl Parker and I think Nate Parker. I mean, they should. I think those guys will have to step up running back wise. But I think they're ready to. I mean, they they got a lot of chances last year because a lot of those games in the fourth quarter they were way ahead, so they got a chance to get some younger guys some carries. So we'll see if that if that experience maybe pays off this year. And uh, Valley has uh, Knox right coming in tonight for uh, scrimmage. Right, Knox will travel to Valley tonight for the scrimmage, and then. Yeah. 
Then Knox plays Winnemac in their season opener, and then Knox hosts Rochester in their second game. Yeah. So we'll be talking about we'll be talking about Knox a lot in the next yeah. throughout the month of August. Um, let's move into our uh, Hoosier North teams. Um, let's start down the road here with uh, the cast and Comets. Uh, first year, uh, sort of first year head coach, second stint for Coach Ulrich. Um, coming in, sounds like the the numbers relative to uh, what they've been used to maybe a little bit better for Caston. Yeah, and a very experienced coaching staff. Coach Ulrich has, you know, I think uh, 17 years of head coaching experience. And, you know, I think I'm, he's been an assistant coach, I think, for the last, like, five years or so. Um, then you add, you know, Tony Slocum is back on the coaching staff as an mm-hmm. assistant coach. He's got a lot of coaching experience. Joe Flitcraft is back. He's... You know, a North Miami guy, but he's been around for a long time. So, uh, this is it's a veteran coaching staff. Um, you've got a kid in Landon Shaver who's back at quarterback. Um, he kind of, they they kind of moved him back and forth last year. Looks like he'll be back at that quarterback spot. But the question is, who's going to be that kind of that bell cow running back? Because you lose a kid like Sam Smith to graduation. Mm-hmm. He was just the guy they always kind of relied on. And then you lose Grant Hickle to graduate graduation as well. He he got a lot of touches last year as well. And and obviously Sam was not just the running back. I mean, he was just the the heart and soul of that team last yeah. year on offense and on defense. So, you know, that's that's a hard hard uh, loss to uh, to overcome for the the Comets. Right, and you you know uh, Garrison Hickle, Grant's brother. I mean, he was just a monstrous offensive lineman as well. He was another big dude. And then you lose Dylan Gearhart, who was another key to that offensive line. Uh, and then uh, I think there was a couple kids who didn't come out for football this year who were the I think they were hoping, uh, due to due to some injuries, uh, who decided not to play. So, uh, but we got the roster. There's, I think, I counted 25 kids on their roster. So, right. the overall the numbers are ticking up, and there's more enthusiasm in this program mm-hmm. uh, going forward. But let's see how it translates onto the field. And they they have a, a very winnable game right out of the gate. They go to West Central. That's that's kind of been a, a pretty competitive game over the last few years, and. Uh, Kasten has gotten that W the last couple years over the uh, Trojans, so uh, yeah, you know it's it's always a good to to start your season off with a with a win. So hopefully, uh, they're scrimmaging. Um, Kasten's traveling to Northfield tonight Northfield. for a scrimmage, okay. and they're in a new, they're, you know their sectional is kind of an interesting sectional. It's uh, uh, it's they're not in sectional forty one. They moved to sectional forty three, so uh, they're probably. If they if they have to play a sectional game on the road, instead of having to travel east, they're gonna have to travel south probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, so, that's the know, other thing we didn't talk about with yeah. uh, with uh, Rochester and, and Valley is the sectional lineups, but we'll talk more about that as we go. But yeah, there was a lot of realignment, <laughs> a lot of realignment for uh, a lot of our teams. Yeah, not just yeah. football teams too. Mm-hmm. So. Um, you know, Culver, another one of the teams that we cover in the uh, Hoosier North Conference. Um, you know, they got a couple of kids that they graduated, but they've got a really good uh, returning senior class. Uh, I'm really excited. Um, they've got a new offensive coordinator up there with Austin Faust, who has head coaching experience from John Glenn, graduated from, from here mm-hmm. and from Rochester. Uh, I'm just looking forward to see uh, what his offense looks like. Right, and we'll, right, I talked with Coach Mike Zaner last night, uh, caught up with him, and he, uh, numbers are a little down. About twenty-two to twenty-four. Hmm. They've usually been around thirty, but that's it's you can it's a number you can work with. I think. I think the key is going to be offensive and defensive lines because mm-hmm. you graduate Austin Zayner, Alex Zayner, and uh, Hunter uh, Evans. Uh, uh, yeah, Hunter, Hunter Evans. Evans. Yeah, you graduate those three. Those were those were key guys for multiple years. Mm-hmm. But boy, Shane Schumann just a wrecking ball at fullback and. Even maybe even more so on defense at that linebacker spot, uh, you know you graduate Tucker Fisher. They're gonna have to figure out who the quarterback is. Uh, you know there's there's been a talk. There's been maybe some competition. Uh, maybe a kid like will a kid like Jason Cadel get get a look at quarterback, or will mm-hmm. they just play him at at fullback? He's not what you would think of when you think about fullback. He's this little guy, mm-hmm. but he he hits the hole hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Emiliano Ortiz, I think, is prime for a big year. I think that you know it, again, not a ton of kids. But uh, good experience on this team. Yeah. Uh, you know, good line. You know, uh, the lineman that I like on this team is Ben Lee. He's going to be a senior. He had, a, I think, he really came on toward the end of last year. I think he's going to be in line for a good year this year. But 
hey, whenever you need three yards, you give the ball to Schumann. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, yeah, Cato was one of the names, uh, you know, when I was up there talking to Coach Croy, uh, his name came up in that quarterback mix. But uh, he said there's about three different guys that they're they're looking at that possibly uh, might end up being that uh, week one starter. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a couple options there for the Cavaliers. Right. The uh, Culver has a scrimmage against North Miami tonight. Uh, I know Coach Schaefer, uh, Coach Zayner, and Coach Grant over in North Miami are good friends. So mm-hmm. it'd be interesting to see how that turns out because when North Miami's going to spread it out, and then you get, I mean, you, you, you get North Judson right off the bat in that first regular season game. That is a everybody who I've talked to about North Judson says as good as they were last year, they'll be as good this year, if not better. Yeah, made it to semi state last year. Right, right? and that's a North Judson team that's not Culver out of the section of the last three years. Yeah. And that's going to be an interesting sectional as well. There's a, a really heavy Hoosier North Conference uh, flair to that sectional now. Yeah. All of a sudden, with uh, Pioneer moving in there, and you got Triton in there as well as Culver, and then uh, yeah, four four of the eight teams are Hoosier North teams. Yeah, so that's gonna that's gonna be interesting. To uh, North Judson is the other one, of course. Mm-hmm. So uh, that'll be interesting to see. We right. talked about uh, and, and North Newton moving down from two A to one A. Don't forget yeah. about them. They'll, they're in that sectional. Yeah. So you got both Newtons now, yeah. North and South, and South Central's in there, and then uh, one more team I think uh, up in the region. Bowman Academy. Bowman. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's you, know, you talk about a, a team that's moved into that sectional is our other team that we cover is Pioneer. Uh, you know, a few question marks with the uh, with the Panthers this year, but. You know, they're like we said with their volleyball team. You know, they don't seem to have down years. I mean, we kind of were wondering, you know, hey, where were they at as they started out last year, a little bit rough with that loss against Winnemac, but they they bounced back in a big way and had a really good yeah. season. And and Coach Barry uh, wants to keep that going. Right. It's easy to look at the way the season ended and that game against Laville was so yeah. ugly, but boy, did they improve so much mm-hmm. from the beginning to the end of the season. They tried to. And it wasn't it wasn't an easy road to get there, but they mm-hmm. got there, and that's a credit to the coaching staff and what they did. Now the key, it's it's weird because I think we've always, um, I think we we were kind of wondering about their offense last year, and I think we're kind of maybe more maybe more more wondering a little bit about their defense this year. Yeah, because you lose a kid like Derek Legrand to graduation, mm-hmm. he was just I mean you had to. You had to set your offense and be prepared to stop him yeah. and get him blocked somehow, and that was much easier said than done. And then Oscar Solano at that defensive tackle spot, he just caused all kinds of havoc as well. Boy, that Pioneer defensive line was terrific last year. You lose those two guys to graduation, what's their defense going to look like? Mm. Can they create as much havoc as they usually do? You lose a kid like Aiden Lowe to graduation, too. He was a big part of it, too. Yeah, they're going to rely on the the Miller twins a lot, I know, on on the line on Uh both sides. and. Uh, the thing that they have going for them this year, at, right out of the gate, is they know who their quarterback is. That right. was a that was a struggle for them for a while until they found uh, Caleb Sweet. Uh, ended up being the the quarterback, but uh, he started off the year as a as a lineman. Yeah, and uh, you know ended up being their quarterback, and and come to find out, he's a pretty good one. Yeah, I mean, really good at reading defenses, and yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you throw him in, you know, you got Caden Hill back there again. You got Ryan Toloza, who, uh, you know, Rylan Toloza, who, you know, is, is a strong kid, is a pretty quick kid as well. And Yeah, I think there's there's going to be a good stable of backs there. I don't, you mm-hmm. know, you lose Brock Robinson to graduation, that's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, let's see who their fullback is going to be. That's kind of, mm-hmm. but I think there's a pretty good stable of backs. I don't think there's going to be, depending on any, any one guy, to just carry the load. But yeah, you lose Brock Robinson and Bo Mersch, those, those kids would be missed. But it, you know, speed wise, how will they how will they stack up against their their opposition? Yeah, that's another one of those. Uh, you talked about Rochester having a good year last year in, in junior high, and, and Pioneer did the same. I mean, they've got some some young kids moving in, and uh, chances of seeing some of those younger kids, obviously with a smaller one A school or, or higher, uh, you know, as as freshmen. But uh, you know. They they start off with a uh, with a tough test. It's always a, a challenge as they go on the road down to Lewis Cass next week to start their season. So yeah, it's always kind of a big rivalry game for them. Always a big rivalry game, and Lewis Cass I know has a lot coming back. I think it's gonna be a really good. We'll learn a lot about Pioneer in that game. Yeah. Because they've got the scrimmage tonight at home against Northwestern. Well, we'll see the unveiling of the new bleachers. We'll see how they can. Yeah. Uh, that'll be that'll be an, a nice thing. And then uh, yeah, like you said, Lewis Cass. And back in that and back in that one A sectional, and we should note that North Judson has never beaten Pioneer since they've become conference rivals. Yeah, 
That's going to be interesting to, to I think, see how the season goes. Because I think everybody thinks North Jetson is going to start the year in the top ten in the polls. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Pioneer has had a lot of success with North Jetson. Beat them last year. Mm-hmm. That will be uh, very uh, exciting. You know, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, first week matchups, Culver at North Jetson, Pioneer at Lewis Cass, Casson at West Central. We won't have those games for you, but we will have... Uh, Rochester uh, at home versus Southwood, and then uh, Valley will be at home versus Wawa C for our week one coverage coming up next week. So uh, let's take a real quick break here. We'll come back. We'll uh, talk a little bit about our volleyball teams and uh, come back with more Talking Sports with Val here in just a moment. Are you looking for a new set of wheels to get you from point A to point B? Mike Anderson in Rochester has exactly what you need to get you where you need to go. Whether you're looking for a new vehicle or a used one with great gas mileage, Mike Anderson and Rochester will be sure to fit you with your new dream ride. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-498-2626 to see how Mike Anderson and Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Hey, welcome back here. Talking sports with Val. Friday afternoon, we talked about it. It's the last one we'll have with no... uh, Football games for quite a while here, at least uh, at least ten weeks, right? Eleven weeks. So uh, we're really looking forward to getting back out onto the gridiron with our teams. But first up, before we get to uh, football Friday next week, we're going to be over at Rochester High School on Tuesday night. We talked a little bit about it earlier, Val, but uh, Rochester hosting Pioneer. They they start off uh, their season with two big matches: Pioneer and Plymouth. Right. right out of the gate, so Coach Leap is going to get a, a real good feel for where her team is. Right, at Plymouth, home with Pioneer, and then next Saturday, August 20th, they travel to North Miami for the Tomahawk Invite. That's always a very competitive tournament. Uh, you know, I was able to see the practice. I mean, there's, um, again, you notice the lack of height a little bit. I mean, you graduate and you graduate Emily Hughes and Lexi Thomas. But I saw a pretty active team that really moved their feet pretty well. Uh, we're going to see some sophomores maybe take on some bigger roles. But, you know, uh, you, you graduate, uh, you know, just, I mean, Emily Hughes was first team all-conference. I mean, mm-hmm. she became a complete volleyball player last year, and that was so impressive to watch. She's now at the University of St. Francis in Fort Wayne playing college volleyball. Uh, and, you know, Lexi was a big part of that block, too. So I think, uh, can they get a good block? Because you can't let teams like Plymouth and Pioneer just fire away at you. Even if you're just digging machines, it's just you, you can only do so much. You've got to have some sort of... Re- some sort of block. I talked with Coach Erin Leap. She's she was leaning toward a two setter system. Alexa Kuskusakis was first team all TRC last year as a setter. She's going to still be a setter, but they wanted to get some swings. So if she's going to get some swings, the second setter has to has to step up. But they don't really know who that is. I think we saw Keaton Doran maybe get a little bit of a look at the practice that I saw, but I think that's still be de- to be determined. Um, you know, defensively there are a lot of options. You know, Riley Holloway is probably maybe the most experienced of those options, but Erin uh, Leap said she is. She, she didn't know who her libero was when I said, and she's thinking about not having one. Really? She thinks we just have so many good defensive players. We just kind of rotate them in. Uh, but there's, you know, there are, there are always some substitution issues that you have to think about. But mm-hmm. yeah, uh, she's leaning against it right now. Yeah. And you, you talk about the sophomores. You know, we saw Audrey Bollinger uh, come in last year as a freshman mm-hmm. and uh, play some really good minutes for Coach Leap. Uh, Lily, Dar- Lily Lett, too. Yeah, Dara Strasser had some mm-hmm. really good minutes. She's she's a solid player in that back row for her right. as well. So they're gonna they're gonna need them to obviously step up, um, you know, in a big way here. Kennedy Leap, uh, the coach's daughter, is a senior this year. She's got uh, probably the most size of, of yeah. any of the players. Uh, and then she could be. Yeah, I think she might be the one who's looked to you know determinate plays. Um, you know, Kylie Freant is is another senior who's. Slowly but surely, got more playing time over the years. I think she's ready to make it, to step up. Uh, we talked about, um, yeah, uh, Holloway uh, is going to play a big role in that defense. I think. Yeah, we'll talk about getting right into the frying pan. You know, Plymouth uh, always has really good uh, program going on, and they're going to be on the road uh, up there at Plymouth. And then, as we mentioned, the uh, the game, uh, the match here against uh, Pioneer, and and yeah. like we said, the the Panthers. You know. Obviously, when you graduate uh, a talented player uh, like Haley Kripe, who just 
I'm sure there's going to be a lot of coaches this year that are just relieved to not have to face her in, uh, you know, volleyball, basketball, or softball this year. But, uh, you know, Coach Nye is uh, – just talk a little bit about the Panthers because, I mean, he's he's loaded too. Right, and you lose Mackenzie Robinson too, who is a big part of their defense. Right. Uh, you lose Kennedy Korn who, you know, uh, you know had some height along the line. Front. And then um, – Carly Morris, Emma Navosky graduate as well. Uh, I think the numbers are a little down this year, but I think it's going to be. Uh, I, I think there's going to be a solid. You know, I don't think they're lacking. I think for for numbers, I think there's just going to be a solid. Everybody's going to know their roles. I think Mackenzie Rogers is going to play a big role on this team. Uh, you know, got Cameron Newby back. Uh, you know, I, I think back row play is going to be big. Mm-hmm. I think um, serve receive is going to be big mm-hmm. in terms of can they. Can they get the ball to their hitters? And then, you know, with, with you know, Grigsby and Kirsten Nyes and Rodgers, which setter is going to step up? Right. And, and how will that? I think Coach Nyes has always been kind of one who likes a two-setter system. But um, so we'll see how that kind of plays out. I think I think some of the roles were a little undefined. Or, and, or, was it, or was it undefined or they were just kind of struggling confidence-wise last year? But I... I expect this to be a really good volleyball team by the end of the year. Yeah, well, you can't you can't forget about uh, Brooklyn Borges up front either. Uh, yeah, she's, she's six foot, and you know she's been. Uh, I think she's primed for a huge. I think she's primed for a huge year. Yeah, I think with Borges and Rogers, I think you've got two just great building blocks for a team, and then. Yeah, and they're they're both big time. You know, you throw in Kirsten Nyes in that mix. I mean, those are all three uh, volleyball first kids, and and they've spent a lot of time in the off season working on their craft right and you know I mean again this is the team that won the Hoosier North last year Mm -hmm. this is a team where everybody is kind of shooting at but I mean it's good it's a good volleyball conference but I mean they they've been I mean they because of their success they've developed that confidence and I think they can handle they can get through these tough situations and I think that I think that they're gonna they're gonna accept the challenge of moving up to two A mm-hmm. when we get to the middle of October. I think they're going to be I think going to be ready for that. Yeah, they'll be the last team at uh, Pioneer that, that gets that opportunity because uh, all the others have uh, played in two A, so they'll be the first uh, experience for the the volleyball team. Is the whole school has moved up to two A now except for football due to uh, enrollment. So yeah, um, you were up at Culver last night, right? Mm-hmm. So let's let's talk a little bit about that because two of our teams were uh, in action in a scrimmage and. Uh, you talk about Hoosier North dominance by the, the Pioneer Panthers over the last few years. Uh, there's another team that we cover that uh, they're kind of young and upcoming, but uh, the Culver Cavaliers, I mean, they're they're on their way. Yeah, this the Culver is quite a bit improved mm-hmm. from what I, from what uh, I saw last year. Um, Avery Garland and Livy Overmeyer are going to be that block in the front, mm-hmm. and they're they're going to be an issue for a lot of teams. I mean. Against Valley last night, Valley, I mean, not only did they get a few blocks, but there were just some balls where Valley, they were trying to steer their steer their attacks around the block, and they just beat the ball into the net because they were so worried about the block. Mm-hmm. So uh, to have that is, boy, don't take that for granted. I mean, that is, to have that, especially at the start of the year, that's going to be terrific, especially if they can, they can keep other teams from just kind of firing away at them, especially at the 1A level. Mm-hmm. Um Avery Garland looked a lot better. Olivia Overmeyer looked terrific. I mean, she, she's only a sophomore. Mm-hmm. Grace Sieber looks a lot more comfortable at that setter spot. And Bryn Barron, Bryn Barron is just somebody who, I, I guess if she were a golfer, you'd say she, she has a lot of shots in her bag. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's got all the shots, it seems like. And you can tell, like even if you had knew nothing about them, you'd, you, you would look at Bryn Barron and say, that girl's played a lot of volleyball. Well, yeah, and you you talk about coaches' kids and how they react. I mean, she's she's a typical coach's kid. She's a smart kid, and and you know she actually is a coach's kid in in volleyball and in basketball. Yeah. right. Mom is a volleyball coach. Dad's a basketball coach. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, a lot of smarts there as well. Yeah, I mean, cross court down the line, she's got those shots, and she's a really you can tell she's a really good teammate as well. Mm-hmm. And that's gonna be key. That's gonna be key. Taylor Darnell is a senior. We haven't really talked a lot about her in the past. But she's gonna be key to uh, that libero spot. She looked comfortable last night. 
Um, you know, we, we've talked so much about the sophomore class, but it's the juniors who were, I think, really stood out. It was Seaver Garland. And the other junior that we don't really ever talk about is Shelby Olivares. I thought she played really well last night, and I think she's going to be a key, key part of this team as well. Mm-hmm. But as you're talking, you're talking sophomores and juniors. Right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, there there's a lot of uh, a lot of young kids there. And right. The future is very bright. Now they graduated two seniors from last year in Sydney uh, Denham and Alina Pizer, and Alina was that middle. Mm-hmm. So obviously that was they're going to move. Uh, you know, Coach Barron wants to move Megan Pearl up to that middle spot to help to kind of support the the younger girls. So we'll see how she does in that spot. And then they lose Sydney Denham to graduation. They, she was big as a leader, according to Coach Barron, that she was, she was that talker in, in the back. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be key too, because serve receive has been a big problem for this team. As, but they're getting they're getting better at it. You can see it. Mm-hmm. But it just, you know, it's all going to be on their side of the net, keeping the ball up, mm-hmm. and then getting the ball to their hitters. But yeah, this this program is uh, ready to make the next step. Yeah. And uh, Grace Sieber uh, looked pretty good as uh, a setter, right? Yeah, looked really, yeah, looked really good. Looked really comfortable, confident. Mm-hmm. So on the other side of the net, let's just go over and talk about Valley. Well, I mean, boy, I mean, we talk about Rochester's graduation losses. Valley was hit hard by graduation as well. Mallory Durkis was first team All TRC. Braden Bainey was first team All TRC, and that's your leading hitter and your libero. Mm-hmm. And then they lose two other seniors. To graduation in in Bree Sheets and Macy Kirkenstein, and Kirkenstein was their setter. So, I was talking with Ashley Durf. I've talked to her a couple times this week. She said she's leaning toward a two setter system. Uh, Avery Wagner has really stepped up as a setter, but she wants her to get some swings. So, that's where the two setter system comes in. And plus, you've got a senior in Abby Cook who had, she's set on the JV for the past couple of years. She's ready to. to play a bigger role in that varsity. So they know who their two setters are, but you can tell they're struggling a little bit with the communication last night. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, Ashley Durf has, you know, she was the JV coach where she's the varsity coach. She's always coached a one-setter system. Doug West, before her, was a one-setter coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mallory Eaton, before Coach West, was a one-setter coach. So <coughs> it's an adjustment for these kids right now. No, nobody at Valley really has had an, uh, any experience in the in the two setter system. Yeah. When you when you have Hannah Angstrand and Macy Kirkenstein as your setter, sure, you sure. don't you don't need a second setter, right? Which you know it's okay to have those communication problems during your scrimmage. You just don't want to have them during your sectional. Yeah, right. So, uh, and which is worth noting because Valley will be hosting the sectional this year, right? Yeah, so two two of our schools are uh, hosting sectional. I think Culver will be hosting a regional again this year. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's... it's a five teamer, and Valley's not very familiar with these other four teams. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they don't play Knox, they don't play uh, John Glenn. Mm-hmm. I think they play Bremen. Uh, they do not play Culver Academy. Mm-hmm. Culver Academy has won that won their sectional two years in a row. Right. They're kind of the team that probably has the most height, mm-hmm. at least, and you know the. I was, I was, we saw them last year. I was pretty impressed by how much they've improved. Mm. I don't think it's as tough as their previous sectional. I don't think there's a team as good as Northwood in there, mm-hmm. but it, or, or West Noble even. But um, the key will be how will we be playing our best volleyball at the end of the season? Because right. you know they, they were riding high last year. They beat Rochester at Rochester. And then Erica Henderson, you remember, she suffered that knee injury in that Rochester match. Turned out to be torn ACL. She's back now. She's the not only is she back, but she's playing great. I mean, mm-hmm. she's the libero. She's ready to assume a lot more responsibility. But it's how does this team develop? Can they be playing their best volleyball in the middle of October? Yeah, that's always the challenge, right? Right. Because yeah. remember, they beat Rochester and then they lose to Southwood. They had a chance to tie for the TRC title if they had won that match. So they had to settle for third place, and then they get pretty much routed by West Noble in the sectional, which was really. So disappointing. I mean, that was a team we thought that we thought that was a winnable match, and they yeah. wound up losing. So, how will they? Can they get to be playing their best volleyball by the end of the year? Yeah. Uh, let's move down to uh, Fulton. Let's talk a little bit about the cast and comments. Uh, new head coach. New head coach Gina Hurlmeyer replaces Melinda Schultz. Uh, I'm going to the Cass County tournament on Saturday, so I'll, we'll have more on them next week. But the key is, how do you replace somebody like Maddie Smith, who mm-hmm. has just did so much for them? I mean, she could play all over the court, 
and then you lose another key player to graduation and uh, Abby Williamson. Mm -hmm. Abby was their best blocker. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was just a one-person force there. But having said that, let's not, I mean, let's talk about who they have back. I mean, Isabel Scales is great. I mean, she's like 5'7", maybe, but she's, I mean, she's just a force up front. You know, you've got you know, Addison Zimpleman, who's, I mean, this is her third year in the varsity playing in the back. You've got two experienced setters in Annie Harsh and Delaney Lowry. Um, so, I mean, this team's got a lot of weapons. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, will there be some, will there be a younger player who will maybe help out and give them maybe, maybe give them that other offensive weapon? Mm -hmm. Um You know, Gina Hurlmeyer hasn't coached volleyball in a while, but she's been successful when she has. In fact, her West Central team beat Pioneer in 2005. Then Pioneer went <laughs> 15, 16 years before losing another sectional match. So, uh, yeah, I, I think this is a, this is a team that, you know, even though the, the, the nucleus of the team is a bunch of juniors, I, I wouldn't call them young. Mm -hmm. I would call them, you know, experienced and ready to go, and, and kids who've had a lot of kids who had a lot of experience winning. I mean. Yeah, Caston lost to Southwood in the sectional last year, but they had won like 11 in a row going into the sectional. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were maybe the third best team in their sectional, but that don't take that as an insult. I mean, they were, that was a really, really tough 1A sectional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We should mention another kid who's going to help on the back row, Macy Hinderleiter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I've raved about her, obviously, uh, on the softball field and basketball court as well. Yeah. And, uh, that's, the, you know, that's the neat thing about this court of girls that you talk about that are juniors I mean so many of them we just every sport you know we see them out there you know participating and, and excelling yeah so it's it's and they're not they're they are not going to get easily intimidated oh no no and I mean they, remember they took a set off pioneer last year mm -hmm. and and you talk about that I mean that's obviously a huge rivalry for uh for them and they they did finally uh break through in softball and, and beat pioneer yeah. so can they do it now on the volleyball court? Mm -hmm. You know, they almost did it last uh, last winter on the basketball floor twice, right. and uh, you know, so they're they're trying to break through. And uh, remember, North Judson is a two A team that won their sectional last year. Cast can beat them in three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it just tells you how good that conference is too. Yeah, volleyball wise. Yeah. And you know, there's other teams that we haven't talked about. Triton, you know, they they usually put a pretty good. Uh, team on the court as well, you know, as far as conference goes. Right. So that's going to be interesting, uh, interesting race. You know, you got an yeah. up-and-coming Culver team. you got Pioneer, who's the uh, kind of gold standard for that uh, conference. you got a casting team that, that thinks they should be that gold standard, and, and uh, you know, they're going to do everything they can to get there. So yeah. it's going to be a, a fun one. Right. First matchup at the Cass County Tournament is Pioneer and Lewis Cass in match one, then Caston and Logansport in match two, and they – Play a consolation and a championship after that. Yeah, that'd be great to see uh, Caston and, and Pioneer playing for that championship game. Right. So that would that'd be fun. So, and remember, Caston has to travel to Southwood for their sectional this year. Yeah. So they're uh, they're back in that uh, very tough. That was a a very young Southwood team that won that sectional and you know knocking off Caston and Pioneer. Last right. Year. Right. Right, Southwood young for the most part, but they did graduate Marissa Metzger, who was their big their big hitter. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, I mean Southwood's always good, and they've got uh, Grace Drake who'll be back. She's only a sophomore, but right. Uh, that was yeah, that was who I was thinking of. Yeah. Had, she was a freshman last year, just spectacular. Yeah, yeah, really so, impressive. Yeah, but again, Cass has to travel to Pioneer for Cass County tournament. They have to travel to Pioneer for the Hoosier North, when they play in Hoosier North play, and they have to travel to Southwood, so they're gonna have to. Develop that thick skin mm. to win at some uh, tough places. Gonna have to be some road warriors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Argus, we haven't talked about them. Uh, you know much about their volleyball? Program? I wrote about Coach Nicole Walter over the summer. I hope people caught that article. Uh, she is an Argus grad, headed back home. She's caught. She's this is her first varsity head coaching experience, but she's taught, coached for a long time at Bremen, within their, within their program. Even helped start the freshman program. Um, you know, she's somebody who, you know, when I ask about some of her coaching uh, inspiration, she talks about Shelly Newell, who is not a volleyball coach, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Shelly is just legendary basketball a legendary coach. basketball coach. And, mm -hmm. and she's talked about, you know, uh, you know I want to give, you know, I want to pay it forward. I want to, you know, co these coaches had so much of an impact on me, and I kind of want to pay it forward. Uh, she's 
again, it's it's tough. She knows what she's she knows what she's dealing mm-hmm. with. She knows that volleyball season is the same time as soccer season. <laughs> So, what kind of pool of athletes can you get to play volleyball at Argus? Do they have Do they have a lot of kids up there that play soccer? A few, from oh, what I've heard. Okay. So, uh, yeah, but she, you know, she's she's already uh, talked with Coach uh, Jennings and she, with Scott Jennings, and she goes, "Do you have any basketball players who maybe need to do something to keep in shape for basketball season? Yeah, if you do, send them on over. We'll we'll teach them." Right. Um, you know, she's trying to. You know, she she's got she's very organized. She's got a, a new defensive system that she's trying to teach, and a new uh, uh, she's she that's what she seems to be really um, emphasizing, especially. But yeah, definitely coming in with a lot of enthusiasm. And you know, you, they graduated. You know, they did graduate some kids. They graduated Mackenzie Cox and Samantha Ferguson, McKenna Lineberry, and Brianne Moyer, and Avery Ness and Lillian Pets and Samantha Rose. But I think she's pretty. I think she's pretty excited about what she has. Mm-hmm. But again, it's just developing those numbers. Right. Yeah, it's it's always been a struggle, obviously, up there with uh, the popularity of uh, soccer there at Argus. So it's uh, you know just being able to have a, a team and and getting things rolling is is obviously a positive. Yeah. So. All right. Anything else on the volleyball front you want to go over? That's all I have. Okay. Uh, but again, we'll know a lot more after that Cass County tournament tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. And, I, and I'm looking forward to seeing Lewis Cass play as well because they're in that sectional with yeah. Pioneer and Rochester. Yeah, that's right. So, and, uh, you know, we didn't mention it, but uh, Pioneer and Rochester also hosting the regional as well. So, the, Right, Rochester's hosting a two-way regional this year on October yeah. 22nd. So Yeah. So uh, that'll be a, a lot of volleyball being played at uh, Rochester's gym. Yeah, so. yeah. Hopefully the zebras will be involved in in a lot of that. That would be nice. And one yeah. of the region, one of the semi-state sites this year is Plymouth. So nice. Yeah. All right. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back here on talking sports and uh, let's talk some girls golf when we get back. The, okay. the girls have been out on the links and and we kind of got a little bit of a feel for uh, who's doing well. We got a couple teams that are doing really well. So we're going to talk about the uh, the girls golf here when we get back in just a moment. <laughs> At First Federal Savings Bank, we have many valuable services for you. We offer a variety of deposit products, such as personal and business accounts. We pride ourselves in being one of the top mortgage lenders in Indiana. We offer commercial loans and business checking accounts for all your business banking needs. Through LPL Financial, our financial services department is here to help you with your financial planning needs. Come see us today and see how our family can help your family. Hey, welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and we've been through uh, football, volleyball, and uh, let, let's talk a little golf, the girls' golf. Uh, let's talk about the most excruciatingly physically difficult <laughs> sport, girls' golf, the but, sport that <laughs> almost you, ruined me at Saturday at Twin Lakes. Yeah, excruciating uh, can be the, the key is sometimes because it becomes very mental, but uh, yeah, Saturday uh, was a very warm day. And, uh, you know, you were out there for, what, about six hours probably? Yeah, I got there at, uh, yeah, I think I got there around 4.30, and I was there until uh, around 9.30 or 10. Yeah, so not quite the, well, I guess it is because the early morning breeze was there, and then when the breeze quit, it was uh, it was brutal. And yeah. The, the humidity was just crazy. And, of course, here we are today, it's almost chilly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the the weather's just been that way, but well, we got a couple of uh, golf teams uh, that we cover in our area. That They're hotter just, than the weather. Oh my! I tell you what, starts off, uh, you know, Valley. I mean, they haven't lost a uh, a dual meet yet. Right, they haven't lost a dual match. The only team that beat them, period, in any tournament was New Prairie, who beat them at the Plymouth Invite, who beat them by one stroke. Yeah, that's it. And I mean, this is a Valley team that. He's putting four seniors out on the course at all times. You know, when you talk about Madeline Weaver, she was, um, you know, she was the medalist at the Plymouth Invite. Shot an 80. Uh, three days later, she went to the Benton Central Invite. She was shot 78, was second overall behind only a golfer from Western. You know, she's she's been great. But look at this last week. I mean, uh, you know, Caden Smollett was the medalist uh, when they beat. Uh, Northwestern and Peru in a three-way match, and then the medalist last night in a win over Northfield was Lily Alt, who shot a 42. Mm-hmm. So, 
with uh, Madeline Weaver, Molly Moriarty, Kane Smalat, and Lily Alt. You've got four girls who are seniors, all basically in their fourth year on the varsity. And they know, you know, there, there's just a trust among them all, and you know, they know that nobody's under nobody's under pressure to carry the team. Mm -hmm. It can be so many different every time. And then the fifth girl is Maddie Thompson, who's only a sophomore. But she's really stepped up and played well. You know, this is her first year of competitive golf, but, you know, she's you, you can see with Maddie, she's just a really talented athlete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's amazing. And, and they're not just winning. They're winning by a lot of strokes. Right. They beat, you know, they, right, they beat Pioneer by 60 shots the other day. They beat... Uh, they beat Northwestern, I think, by by thirty. Mm -hmm. I mean, on Tuesday, they beat Northfield by forty three the other day. I mean, yeah, they're, they're winning these matches pretty handily. Um, and of course, the Benton Central tournament, they won that by six. They shot three fifty nine. You know, I mean, to break three sixty at any time of the year is good. To do be doing it in August, mm -hmm. and you know, basically about a week into the season, that's really good. That's just because most teams get better. Boy, it's a great sign with this team and. You know that they, they they all. I think a lot of kids have trouble like putting a bad shot out of their minds. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody says it, but to actually do it, it's not as easy. But these kids can do it, mm -hmm. and they, they they're really motivated. They you know they won the TRC two years ago. They finished second in the TRC behind McConaughey last year, and that's really motivating them. You could you, just talking to Madeline Weaver and some of the, Coach Thad Malat. Yeah, they, this is a motivated group. Yeah. I mean they're an easy going group. They're fun to get along with. They've I mean they've they've grown up together, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, playing multiple sports together. I mean these these they're really close friends beyond all that. But right. I mean they're 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 motivated to, to get back on it to, to do it for each other. You talk about the experience of the of Valley. Uh you look over at the Rochester Zebras, not the experience that Valley has, but right. uh, boy, they're having a really good start to their season as well. Right, we were kind of wondering, you know, they they graduated Kat Rensberger and Reagan Becker, but what were the, you know, what would the team look like? Well, Olivia Bailey is a freshman who's come in, and she's playing number one right off the bat. But you know, I talked with Olivia after that Twin Lakes tournament when she shot eighty six, and she was like, "Well, it could be any of us three who could be number one." Like, mm -hmm. like, it, 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 I mean, she was honored, but at the same time, um, you know, she, you know, she didn't feel like she had, you know, she was trying to show anybody. Mm. Or prove anything, uh, she just feels you know there's just kind of a really good kinship, you know. That, but I mean, she's a freshman. Their number two player, Ava Thomas, is a sophomore. Their number three player, Peyton Moore, is a junior. And then you you add two, you know, seniors who played a lot of competitive golf, and Delaney Barkman and Savannah Eccles at four and five. And yeah, I mean, this is a team with a lot of high hopes. Well, you talk about what she's what Olivia said, and and it, it came to truth because uh, you know they both had. Uh, Low low matches this week. All three of those right. girls have had low matches in uh, in the last week. So. Right. Rochester finished third at the Twin Lakes invite with a 363. Logansport won it with a 351. But we should mention that was Logansport's fourth tournament of the week, mm -hmm. and that was Rochester's first tournament of the season. And it's a Logansport team that also got uh, honorable mention votes. Yeah, that's really yeah. So again, shooting 363. In your first tournament of the season, the the second Saturday and or actually the first Saturday in August, that's that's really promising. And it, and you couldn't hardly <laughs> they were having trouble holding on to the grip. Right. right? Uh, yeah, I was watching Peyton Moore. Yeah, she was she was really struggling. She had she was wiping off her clubs with a towel after just about every stroke because her her hands were perspiring so much. And I mean, the, you know, there was a lot of again. No, this is golf. Golf is an inherently frustrating sport. If you see a happy golfer. Don't trust them. <laughs> everybody, everybody always thinks they should do better. But uh, yeah, but I mean, these girls—they—they they literally, they—they they really thought they could do better. And Peyton Moore had said, "Hey, I, I shot in the mid '80s all summer, and then I shoot 92 at Twin Lakes. That was, yeah, I can do better than that." So, I mean, that there's definitely high hopes of this, that. I mean, 363 again is a really good score. I mean, they, I mean, you know, usually it's like, boy, we hope to get to 363 by sectional. It means all our practices are paying off. They're shooting 363 right off the bat. So it's a really good sign. And Delaney Barkman shot 41 on the front nine. She is so much improved. Shot 94 at Twin Lakes. And, you know, then they go and they, they beat Pioneer 187 to 240. Um, you know, then they then they go to Wabash, and they beat Wabash at Honeywell on their course by 40. 
You know, then a tough loss on Thursday night. They lose to Warsaw by one stroke, 185-186 at Rosella Ford on Warsaw's home course. Mm -hmm. Remember, Rochester beat Warsaw by one stroke at the Twin Lakes Invite. Mm -hmm. So these teams are pretty well matched, but the fact that the home course advantage obviously means something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, even though they're young, they've had a... You know, these girls were, you know, just talking just talking to them, they were like, they all played like, you know, three times a week over the summer. I mean, they are they are avid golfers. Well, I was going to say, typically you'd say that as young as they are, they probably haven't played Rosella Ford, but as much as those girls play, they probably have. Yeah. I'm sure that they've they've played there uh, a time or two, and even yeah. though they haven't maybe in high school, obviously. Right, so. right. But, yeah, I mean, you, you watched the, you know, you watched the Twitter and the Facebook and all that stuff over the summer, and, and you know, Olivia and, and Peyton, and, and they were just, you know, all three of them were, you know, all over the place, uh, different tours and and just golf. I mean, that is their sport, and, and it's, you know, it's really showing, you know, early on in the season. Yeah, and it's it's funny because Olivia Bailey and Avid Thomas and Peyton Moore might not be the most three physically imposing girls you've <laughs> ever met in your life, but watch them play golf. Uh-huh. You don't have to be six foot. Right to play golf. They were right. right the Rochester girls were paired with girls from Logan Sport and Winnemac, and they were out driving them on every hole. Yeah, I mean, like way out driving them. Well, like, yeah. like the Logan Sport and Winnemac girls would be hitting their third shot before the Rochester girls would hit their second shot. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of advantage already. Then. Yeah, yeah. Now, Coach Chad Thomas has talked about we've got to get better on our shots from a hundred yards in. Those wedge shots and those iron shots. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they've got to figure the, they've got to figure that out because yeah. uh, that's where they uh, again they were kind of sailing shots off to the right. If they, if they can put those shots from 100 yards in on the green, I think they'll be good. It's a pretty good putting team from what I could tell. Mm -hmm. um, other notables as far as uh, golf teams. Obviously, we talked about Pioneer. Um, they they struggled against Rochester. They did get a win. Uh, the other night against uh, Oregon Davis at home on Pond View's course, so uh, they got off of the, you know, got onto the uh, winning side of things there. So right, they've got five girls this year, so they're going to be posting a team score. They've got the two girls back from last year, and Ashlyn Brook and Emily Schmaltz, and then they've they've added Misha Price. She's a senior. She's played some competitive golf in the past, but didn't play last year. And then uh, uh, Courtney Klein is, came out for golf this year as a senior, and then they've got a freshman in Mia McKeg. Mm -hmm. Uh, Caston has a has a team, but uh, they didn't post a full uh, team score against uh, Pioneer and, and Valley, right? Yeah, yeah. We're looking for some results, but they've got you know Rick Phelps is the new coach. He coached them in the middle school, and they've got some two fre they've got two freshmen that he coached when they were middle schools middle schoolers last year. So from what we hear, they've got four. So if they can have if they have four, then they've got a complete team. So mm -hmm. uh, again, this is kind of in the early stages of the process here, but. Mm -hmm. uh, pleasant, pleasant surprise to have girls golf back at Caston. They haven't had a full team score at a sectional since 2016, mm -hmm. which seemed like a, I was surprised to look that up because it just seemed like a year or two ago they decided not to have golf, but it's actually been six years. So mm -hmm. just hopefully they can stick with it and have fun with it. Yeah. Uh, new coach up at Culver. Um, uh, Teresa Jacobson retired. Yeah. So uh, Pew takes over. Haven't seen any scores from them, have you? They have not played a match yet. Haven't played a match. Uh, in fact, they don't. Scores. Like they don't play a match until August twenty second. Okay. But they got moved uh, to from the Laporte sectional to that very very tough Warsaw sectional. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, since you brought up sectionals, uh, you know you talked about that Warsaw sectional. Rochester now, uh, right. going to the uh, west. Right. Rochester got moved from the Warsaw sectional to the Twin Lakes sectional, and that is going to be a huge factor because. Just as Culver Academy was moved into the Warsaw sectional, Rochester moves out. Culver Academy was seventh at one, won their sectional, won their regional, was seventh at state last year. And they're in the top ten rankings already this yeah. year. Northwood is in that Warsaw sectional. They've gone to state four years in a row. So uh, now Rochester goes. Yeah, Logansport won that sectional last year, and Rochester has lost now lost to Logansport at that Twin Lakes invite, but only by twelve strokes. I mean, that's again, you don't make up twelve strokes overnight, but. They're optimistic that they can find those 12 strokes. And then, you know, Winnemac was second at that Twin Lakes sectional last year. Rochester beat them by 40 mm. the other day. And then Kankakee Valley was third. 
we we haven't seen Kankakee Valley yet. They they weren't at Twin Lake at the Twin Lakes invite. So, but again, Rochester held their own. I guess again they they were third. And you know, Logansport and Plymouth were the two schools that beat them. That's that's a very good Plymouth team that goes to the Warsaw sectional. So, uh, yeah, I think Rochester's going to be right in that mix in that Twin Lakes invite in that, at that Twin Lakes sectional when we get to mid, the middle of September. They're going to have a good chance to get to regional if they reach their potential. And this will be our first sectional series with the uh, the new rules as far as more teams actually uh, qualifying. Right. For there the are now round. there are now six regionals instead of five. And the sixth regional, they had to add one, and they moved it to Sandy Pines and Demont. Mm -hmm. And that the Twin Lakes sectional feeds into that Sandy Pines regional. Right. And there's more teams out of each sectional, right? Well, three. That no, still, still three teams out of each sectional. Okay. But the key is there will be six regionals instead of five. That means 18 teams will make state instead of 15. Okay. So then more teams can qualify for the state. Right. Okay. Right. So we, we don't know where they... In the spring, we'll find out where they add the sixth boys golf regional. Mm -hmm. But the yeah, the girls golf regional will be at Sandy Pines. Of course, the boys have been going to Sandy Pines for quite a few years. That's a beautiful course. Mm -hmm. It's really tough though. So, uh, any other golf notes you want to work on? Uh, that's really all I have for right now. Uh, yeah, just uh, there's an obvious excitement for the game with Caston as a team and Pioneer as a complete team. So that's just a really, it's a really good thing. Yeah. Let's take one more real quick break, and we'll come back and uh, we'll talk maybe a little, uh, a little tennis. I know we haven't gotten uh, any action uh, yet on the courts, and uh, maybe a quick preview of uh, some soccer as well, because we're going to be doing uh, a little soccer next week for you. So we'll be back here quickly uh, talking sports with Val. RTC TV4 is proud to present the RTC TV4 Sports app. Now you can watch your favorite games and events from our local school partners live and on demand through your smart devices. And best of all, it's free. There's no cost to download or to watch. Just search RTC TV4 Sports on the Google Play Store, App Store, or on Roku, and download now to start watching the local coverage you hey, enjoy. back here talking sports with Val. Don't forget, stay tuned on Channel 4 after the conclusion of our episode, Talking Sports, here tonight. Uh, we're going to replay the uh, 1987 2A state championship game, Rochester Zebras, the uh, 2A state champions. And uh, big anniversary coming up this year, 35th anniversary of that. They're going to be celebrating the uh, team and, and uh, everyone involved in the, uh, the during homecoming on September 2nd here at Rochester. So stay tuned. That is our RTC TV4 Classic Game of the Week. Last one as we uh, move into live action starting next week with the Zebras hosting the Southwood Knights in game one of the 22 football season. Hard to, hard to believe we're already into uh, fall sports. But uh, we've talked, uh, talked about football. We've talked about volleyball. We've talked about golf. Um, you know, real quick, some, some tennis notes uh, as we, uh, we get going, obviously. There was a health emergency at Rochester last week, and that's the big news. And, well, I don't want to get too much too deep in it, right. but it did involve a tennis player. I think that's kind of well known now, and yeah. so that's going to affect. That's going to leave a hole in Rochester's lineup, and that's also really kind of set back the team. I mean, the, I don't know how much they've been able to practice, um, but we were looking forward to seeing a team that basically returned everybody from last year. Yeah. Braden Braden Zink and Brock Bowers, uh, you know, are, are a solid one-two at the single spot, uh, but the se the turn season may be in a little bit of flux at this point. Obviously, our thoughts and prayers for the the entire team and and of course Drew. So yeah, yeah. And then uh, as for Tippecanoe Valley, they got a new coach. Clayton Adamson has taken over for Nick Kindig. Clayton's been around the program for a long time. He's played a lot of tennis, a lot of baseball. He's a great. I mean, he he bleeds green and gold, and he will fit right in. Uh, you know, they got an important transfer who came in. Cody Smith was a kid who played at Rochester. He's now at Valley. And again, they, they and they didn't have anybody who graduated from last year's team. So that's just a team that's getting deeper and deeper. Uh, with Dylan Neese, they've you know he was our uh, you know he was really really good last year. Won singles, and then Cam Manuel and Wyatt Ryder should fill out the singles lineup. We'll see where Cody fits in. But remember, their number one doubles team last year of Anakin Pettit and Cooper Walls. They were our RTC players of the year. They had a great year. Um, you know, Minix and Ragon was their number two doubles team. Uh, and they're they're back as well, so we'll see how this team, uh, how they how the kind of the spots kind of 
I mean, uh, is everybody at the same spot, or and where does Cody fit in? I guess is the question that mm-hmm. that we're wondering about. Uh, but yeah, I was talking with Anakin Pettit. He said, you "Play a lot of baseball over the summer." He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "Like, man, he goes, you crouch for a long time. I'm just try- glad to play a different sport and kind of <laughs> try my other muscles." He goes, "After a long day of catching, you." Yeah. Not only that, but throwing on all that gear. Yeah. That's got to be one of the hardest. Uh, obviously, pitching is probably the hardest, but the, the catcher is right up there with it. Yeah. Long, long days. Yeah. So, this yeah, this is a Valley team that uh, should be pretty competitive. Uh, but, obviously, you look at Peru in the conference, who's going to be big. And then for Valley, you know, they, they, you know, they've got Warsaw in their sectional. Mm-hmm. Um, As for, and, of course, Rochester, they've got to deal with Peru in their conference and Culver Academy in their sectional. Yeah. So that's uh that's it for tennis, right? Nobody else nobody else has right. a tennis teams. So when when do they get going on uh, matches there? Mm, most uh, have matches next week. I think Rochester's supposed to play Triton on Thursday. Valley is supposed to play Wawasee on Monday. Okay, so they'll both get uh, get underway next week as mm-hmm. well. Awesome. Uh, we talked about it uh, coming up next week on Thursday night. We're going to have uh, the Rochester Zebras hosting the cast and comments over at Blackadder with a uh, a soccer match. Um, you know, new new coach uh, for Rochester um, actually was in today, and, and we had a, a chat and, and uh, gave him a, a camera to, to help film some of the games. So, um, you know, uh, obviously some big graduations. Yeah. Um, but uh, it sounds like they've got some, some good young talent coming up. I mean, they're going to be young, but uh, it sounds like they got some talent coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think the key is who's going to be able to score goals on this team. I think Parker Wallace as a, as a keeper is going to be key to this team because he's, you know, even though he's a junior, this is his third year in the Vars, and he's just really comfortable back there. But it's now who's going to kind of fill in uh, the spots around because you lose you lose Pickens. Not only that, you lose Adam Baroni to graduation. Adam was so key mm-hmm. on that on that back line. I think we for four years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, you know, I think that the guys could kind of look to Zach to. Okay, make a play, make something happen. Right. Uh, I think last year they were trying to develop where the where Zach wasn't so dependent on. Mm. But it'll, it'll be I'll be curious to see what kind of steps they make in that direction. They start the season on Saturday with a home match against John Glenn. That will not be easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tough one with uh, with a you know I don't know much about Glenn this year, but uh, they they generally have pretty good uh, soccer program over there. So. Yeah, generally, yeah. And then, you know, they're still in that 2A sectional with uh, Fort Wayne Canterbury is not in that sectional anymore, but Fort Wayne Concordia and Fort Wayne Dwinger are still in there, and they both might be top 20 teams in 2A. Yeah. And Manchester is in that sectional, and they have been a dominant uh, program in the TRC for a long time as well. At least they don't have to go as far to get to it. Right. The sectional's at Wabash yeah. this year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and Culver Academy's in that sectional, oh, too. Oh, yeah, just Culver Academy, yeah. yeah. Possibly three top 10 teams by the end of the season. Yeah. No. So no no big challenge there, and uh, they're going to be taking on a, a casting team. We saw them uh, win the sectional last year against Winnemac, um, but they had uh, you know they had some key graduation losses as well. So it'll be interesting to see coming in, uh, you know, how they refill the lineup. Right. I mean, their defense was just so solid last year, and defensively, <coughs> and then combined with Bailey Zimpleman, a goalkeeper. So first of all, you know who's going to be their goalkeeper? That, right. That's something that Coach Sanchez is going to have to figure out. Uh, and then, you know, defensively, are you, you going to be as sturdy as they were last year? I think Talon Zider is going to play a big role on that defense. Uh, we'll see about, you know, kids like, you know, kids like Caleb Stinson and, and Brady Evans are so athletic. It looks like, you know, you know Brady was able to get back uh, on, the tr- on the running track in spring sports. So ho- hopefully his knee is fine, and then uh, that'll help. And then, you know, uh, Aguilar Mendez, a friend, I mean, he's – He's just a gifted soccer player. He's just got great instincts. I think it's just as he gets bigger and stronger, mm-hmm. he's just only going to get even tougher to stop. Right. Just a sophomore, right? Yeah. Yeah. Big part of that team last year is a freshman. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be an interesting matchup. And you know, obviously, when you talk soccer, you you can't uh, you can't talk our area and soccer and not talk about Argus and. Um, you know the the boys are back in one A after a one year trip over to two uh, A land, which you know obviously ended their season sooner than they're used to. But 
they had a really good uh, a really good showing in that two A sectional against the uh, the host school. Um, it was the it was the soccer game of the year against Canterbury. It might have been might have been the best sporting event period. I was at last year. That was just edge of your seat stuff for. 90, 94, 90 plus. 94 yeah. plus minutes. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, they they graduated a lot of a lot of talent up there as well. Right, boy. I mean, again, talk about Teddy and and Michael. Teddy and, and my, Teddy Redinger and Michael Richard. I mean, how do you replace them? But also, how do you replace Crew Johnson mm-hmm. in the ba- at goal at goalkeeper because he was incredible in that Canterbury match. And then you know you've got some some midfielders. That are, I mean, Dylan Kindig was. He came out as a soccer player so much last year. Mm-hmm. Um, well, kids like AJ Mills, you know, what kind of role will they play? What they who's going to score and who's going to score goals on this team as well? So mm-hmm. I think it's just a lot of kids and a lot of unfamiliar spots. But again, I think you trust Coach Vanderbilt so much that. Um, but I mean, this is maybe as much of a rebuilding year as he's had in a long time. Right. Well, it, it's a good year to be back in 1A for him. I mean, yeah. you know, if you're going to be rebuilding, and, and not only that, but uh, they get a little home cooking when it comes down to uh, sectional time as well. Yeah. It's kind of how do you build the house? You build the foundation first, and then you work your way up. Mm-hmm. So I think it's – I'll be curious to see defensively and can they play that possession style. That's kind of the foundation, and then building the house from there. Yeah. Because in a lot of ways, the – the, the 2019 state championship team, that was kind of, they always had the foundation. And then Teddy and Teddy was kind of the last piece. I mean, obviously Chino was kind of, he was a big part of the house too. But mm-hmm. then Teddy was kind of being able to finish because it was like they had all these playmakers, but they didn't have any finishers. Mm. And then. So you're saying Teddy was the trim? Yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. the trim in the house? Yeah. He made it fancy? Yeah, he made it fancy. Yeah. yeah. No, I see what you're saying, and and yeah, it's it's going to be a little bit of the you know you talk about anniversaries and you talk about big seasons and big moments, um, you know, 60 years of Argus soccer. Yeah, they're going to play their 1,000th game this year. Yeah, yeah we're going to have that on uh, September 3rd, 1,000th mm-hmm. uh, game. I mean, it's crazy. I I don't know, you know, the only other team I could imagine that would be close to that obviously would be the Culver Academy because they were uh, the first two teams. Yeah. yeah, that first year it was yeah. Culver and Argus. Yeah, one, one, and one. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's hard to believe sixty years of, of Argus soccer, and and they they definitely, uh, uh, you know, they talk about you know the Stones and and the Vanderwheels and and all the the names that you hear up there, and uh, yeah, the Baileys know, and the yeah, you know, Chino and 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 the Rokes, and I tell you, it's, there's a lot of history when it comes to Argus soccer. And yeah, a lot of really good soccer too. Yeah. So, uh, on the girls' side, um, you know, we should mention Tippecanoe Valley boys, Trevor mm-hmm. Brown, back in the coaching right coaching ranks in our area, and uh, I mean, he again, he's had a long history of success, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, John Ruiz, one of the best players in our area, uh, he's going to be key to that team. Obviously, they graduate Caleb Peck, and he was huge to their team. But uh, again, Coach Brown's team's always fundamentally solid. And you know they're they're going to be in that same sectional as the zebras, so right. a, a tough one. Yeah, really tough. And you know I, I don't know what the dynamic will be. Obviously playing at Wabash on the, on the turf, uh, you know we've seen it not have an effect. You know I, I was kind of worried about that when when Argus on that 2019 run when they had to go to South Bend St. Joe and and play against um, Fort Wayne. Um, was it Lakewood Park? Lakewood Park Christian mm-hmm. out of Fort Wayne. Uh, well, not technically out of Fort Wayne, but close to Fort Wayne. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I, I thought that would have a huge effect on them, and it really didn't seem to. They they played very well on the turf, and uh, you know we'll see what that does. You know, because it obviously makes the ball carry them differently. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the Argus girls, as we move over and, and talk a little girls soccer, um, you know, they've obviously got some some holes to fill when you talk about you know Lizzie Edmonds and. Uh, Bullenbacher and and you know some of those girls that graduated. Uh, Carly Miller, yeah. But um, what uh, what do you, what do you think? The obviously they've got uh, you know the number one player in RTC land for the last few years. Lily Hines coming back, and that's always a good base to start with. Yeah, I mean this. I mean the key will be 
uh, can they pressure the opponent from the midfield and then possess the ball and just keep because they were so good at I mean you, you didn't even get chances to score against them last year mm -hmm. so that that took some pressure off somebody like Lizzie you know I, I, they graduating Hannah Trump is that I mean that's gonna hurt mm -hmm. but I mean they get Again, Hines back and Emma Dunlap is going to be a key player on this team. Uh, they've got, I mean, they played in so many big games over the years that I think that'll that'll really suit them well. I mean, it, it's a team that's going to be motivated after that loss to Westview in the regional semis last year. Uh, you know, Ariana Allen is she's just a fantastic player. I mean, she's just always she's just always in the middle of everything. And mm -hmm. um, can they develop more scoring threats than just that? Mm -hmm. We we again we know about Hines, and we know about Dunlap, and we know about Allen. But who's going to be? Can they develop more scoring threats beyond that without having to sacrifice any defense? Because mm -hmm. Joe Stone is a defensive co first coach. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, and boy, that section. I mean, the, it's a tough conference though. They play a tough schedule. There there just aren't that many easy games on the schedule, and then you got Trinity Greenlawn in your sectional. Mm -hmm. And who's new to the sectional? They won. They won their sectional last year. It's going to be a very interesting uh, year, but it should be. Real, I mean, Argus is. They won the sectional four years in a row, and there's no reason to think why they shouldn't be favored again. But it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Well, and then they're going to get some home cooking as well. So uh, both uh, boys and girls at Argus this year. Yeah. So both Argus will as both the boys and girls sectional. Yeah. That's the first time. Gosh. It's been a few years, at least, that uh, that they've hosted both. Uh, yeah, the girls have been uh, up at uh, Newton Park for the last few years. Right. The weird thing is that if both get to the regional final, the regional final will be held at separate locations, mm -hmm. which the IHSA said was the whole point in mm -hmm. kind of rejiggering the regional format. Girls still going to Westview. The girls would go to Westview, but the boys would go to Taylor. Oh, not only different sites, but different ends of the state. Yeah, basically. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. There's a few questions there with yeah. some of the right. You know, don't even don't even get me started on the basketball realignment stuff that yeah. they did because I have no clue what they're doing there. But uh, you know, mm -hmm. we'll see what happens when we get to yeah. that. But I mean, uh, yeah. So I'm mean, again high hopes at Argus, and I think high hopes again at Culver. Obviously, Culver is a team, you know, A.J. Neese, I mean, they won 14 games last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, they played great soccer. Then Sophia Heath got injured in the sectional, and that just, I mean, I think it took a lot of wind out of their, I mean, because she was just not only a great goalkeeper, but just a great leader for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, again, I, I'm still thinking this is going to be a really good, I mean, Giselle Villegas, she's, you watch her, she's just so fast, and she's so fun to watch. And then Kaylee Hamilton to support her, uh, and then um, Cassidy Banks. I mean, this is a team that's gonna, they're going to score plenty of goals. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about that. It's going to can they? Uh, how how good are they going to be along the back line? Mm -hmm. That is going to be big. And then uh, how well do they play against the best teams on their schedule? Right. Because I mean, we we know they can score five six goals against a weak competition. Mm -hmm. Five six seven eight goals. It's, how, you know, can they score goals against the best teams on their schedule? Obviously, they did really well in beating Rochester twice last year. That was a good Rochester team. But, again, Argus and LaVille are at an even higher level than that. Yeah, yeah. And Trinity Greenlaw. Yeah. That's going to be interesting to see real quick Culver Boys soccer. Um, I know they graduated. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we haven't, yeah, we need to talk about Culver Boys soccer. Coach uh, Lovette is back. Uh we're curious about the the number situation is going to be key for them. I right. think they only had eleven or twelve all of last year. They right. they need to get more numbers. And they graduated several, didn't they? The out of last year's team. Uh, I think they graduated just one. Oh, was it just one? Okay. It, it might have been. It might have been none. Okay. But they sh should have most everybody back. Yeah, but struggling right there around that uh, full team mark. You're right. I mean, they, they just kind of wore out a little bit last year. But I I think they'll. I mean, Coach Levet he, he knows a lot about the game, but yeah. Uh, yeah, very good coach, and he did a great job two years ago when he had, when he could make subs. Yeah, but this is, uh, you know, going to be in, a, in a, 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 ser a, a season where, uh, how you know, can they build on what they had last year? Ethan Keller is a very good player. Mm -hmm. Ashton Macedonio is a really good player, but hopefully they can just have better numbers so they don't tire out as quickly. 
All right, well, we're out of time here for today, but uh, again, tune in next on RTC TV 4 Channel 4 in Rochester. We've got the uh, 1987 Rochester 2A state championship game, and uh, they're going to be celebrating that later on this year at homecoming in the uh, 35th anniversary. So that's coming up next. Glad you could tune in, and we'll be back next week and talk more sports with Val.